This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Okay, Linda will be praying for you and uh, praying that the Lord will work in your life. Okay, now we have, uh, in, uh, we're going to go into, get it right into John 5 because today I want us to take a look at getting in on what God is doing. Next week, we're going to take uh, a look at what kind of a witness are you? It was interesting because Jesus uh, started talking about John the baptizer and giving a description of him as a witness, a witness of who Jesus was. And in doing so, he gave some great insight into what a witness is, what kind of a witness are. Well, I don't know about you, but I grew up, a witness was somebody that went and knocked on doors and would grab people by the collar and say, if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven or to hell? You know, and that's not what the Bible teaches at all. What is a witness? It's a, it, you know, what is it that a witness does and what is it that he says? And we're going to have, we're going to see that insight next Sunday. But today we're taking a look at something that Jesus says that is remarkable and, and it gets, um, it gets so glossed over so many times. We, we miss out on it so many times. Um, by the way, Tim uh, reminded me earlier, if you need a Bible study guide, we have extras. We try to put enough out on there, every table so that everybody has some. But if you don't have one, uh, probably the table next to you does, but we have extras down here, and all you have to do is just raise your hand, and, and uh, uh, Tim will be happy to, to hand them out to you. Okay. In uh, th- these next 11 verses in John chapter 5, uh, starting with verse 19, Jesus makes some, some rather amazing statements about what God is up to, what God is doing, why Jesus is there, why he has, why he's starting this ministry. And he makes this declaration that God is doing his word and his will through Jesus. Jesus makes this, this proclamation. And, uh, and basically what he's saying is that he becomes the revelation of God and God's will. Now, I'm always curious about the argument that many have, that many make, that Jesus wasn't really God. There are faith, denominations, religions that, that base their teachings on this principle, that Jesus isn't really God, that he's only the Son of God, or that he is a great prophet, or that he, is, um, he was an angel, or, you know, whatever. They have so many different ways of explaining it. And th- there are numerous give- reasons given, and none of them are valid. But I want to give you a different perspective to, l- to look at this principle and understand the deity of Christ. We call him Jesus because that was what Mary was told to call him, Yeshua, which was, came from the, the Hebrew, Yeshua, and uh, the Greek, Jesus, which simply means Savior. And so Jesus was called that because he was to be the Savior of the world. But have you ever wondered what heaven calls Jesus? What name do the angels refer to Jesus by? How do they, what do they call him? He's not their Savior. They didn't call him Jesus. What was, he, what was his name before he came to earth? What did heaven refer to? How did heaven refer to Jesus? Well, there are many names and terms in the Bible given that indicate how heaven thinks of Jesus, what heaven's perspective is of Jesus. But I just want to pick out, and, and there are lots of them. We could go through them, do a whole different study on that. But I want to pick one verse out of the Old Testament and one verse out of the New Testament and give you some insight as to what heaven's perspective is of Jesus and who Jesus is. Now, remember in this culture the importance of a name. A name identified who you were and what you were. So a name was very important, far more important than it is today. You know, uh, 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 my, uh, my, 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 I have a granddaughter and a grandson, and they're living with us right now, which is awesome, um, uh, until, they find, uh, until they find a house. Then Eric and, and Jen, his wife, they have to move out and leave Mona Jane and Owen. We've told them, you can move if you want to, but Mona Jane and Owen stay here. Owen is one year old today. He's turning one year old today. His, his dad wanted to name him Falcon. He wanted his, that, I think his name should be Falcon. That's a real name. You know, and, and I thought, oh yeah, that's a real name, all right. That's a name you want, you know, as a kid growing up. Hey, bird brain, you know. <laughs> Uh, but no, and so today he writes a Twitter and uh, he says, happy birthday, buddy boy. He says, I sure wish we could have stuck with Falcon. You know, he still wants to call him Falcon. So, you know, whatever. But um, he is, uh, he doesn't eat like a bird. I'll tell you that right now. He does eat like a Falcon, come to think of it. 
Uh, but a name is far more important uh, in that culture than it is to us. We look at names now as just something, oh, we'll give you your grandpa's name or your, your cousin's name or something like that. We're gonna, but in that culture, a name was really, really important. And I want you to see uh, how heaven thinks of Jesus. First verse I want to look at in the Old Testament is in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. You know this verse well. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders. And look at the names now that heaven says. His name shall be called. He, this is who he is. In other words, this is how we identify him. This is, this is the word, the inspiration coming from heaven. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's how they thought of Jesus, the angels. That's how heaven thinks of Jesus. Now, I want you to see in those four names there something really, really interesting. What is the wonderful counselor? Well, do you remember that Jesus said at the end of his ministry, he told the disciples, I'm going to send to you the comforter, or the other word is the counselor. I'm going to send you the counselor to comfort you. Who is the counselor? The Holy Spirit. Now, here he's called, heaven thinks of him as the counselor, the wonderful counselor. Then heaven says he's not only the wonderful counselor, he is mighty God. He's not a God. He is the God. He is mighty God. And not only that, but he is everlasting Father. Now in this passage of Scripture, we're going to look at how Jesus refers to the Father. But yet heaven thinks of Jesus as the everlasting Father. And then it refers to him as the Prince of Peace. And we are willing to accept that. Oh, yeah, he's the Prince of Peace. But he's all of that. This is a great way. If you want to get into a great discussion with somebody about what the Trinity is like, uh, use this passage because this is more than just, uh, just the Trinity alone. This is, uh, this is four different names. And so it's, it's, so, um, it's so confusing. I, ask me to explain the Trinity. I can't explain the Trinity to you. It's three individual people who are the same person. And we come up with these descriptions for the Trinity. We say, oh, well, it's three parts that make up one. No, it isn't. Each one of them is an individual that stands alone and exists independent of the other, and yet they are the same. I don't know. God didn't make us that way. We are not physically made to understand it. So just deal with it. You ain't that smart because God didn't make us that way. We know that it's true, and this verse even talks about it. We know that that's what it is, but we're not, we don't have the mental capacity to really understand it. I think when we get to heaven, we'll understand it a little better. I'm not sure that we'll ever completely, totally understand it. But the Holy Spirit, uh, the Son, and the Father are all the same person. And so heaven refers to uh, this Jesus, the, the person we call Jesus, refers to, and the Old Testament refers to him as all of these. He is the Counselor, the Holy Spirit. He is God, the Mighty God. He is the Father. He is the Prince of Peace. That's who Jesus is. That's how heaven thinks of him. Now go to the New Testament. This verse in New Testament, we've already seen it. It's the, the first verse in the, the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, which is Logos. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. Not was as in past tense, but is God. And so now the New Testament introduction to him is that he is the logos. He is the revealed knowledge of God. That's how you think of Jesus. That's how heaven thinks of Jesus. He is the revealed knowledge of God in physical form so that we can get a sense of who God is and what he's like. So that's how heaven thinks of Jesus doesn't think of him as the, just the son of God or, or a God or a prophet or a good teacher. He is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, the word who is God.